Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a professor of construction management and on this channel we talk everything about construction. Today we're going to be talking about lean construction and we've been exploring in this series the eight areas of waste. And we've looked at defects and we've looked at overproduction. Today we're going to be looking at workers waiting for work and work waiting for workers. And we're going to unpack that and we're going to think it through. And I really believe that if you really start to understand where waste is occurring and you're more aware of it, you'll be much more effective at running your construction projects. I mean, if we want to be really in control of things, one of the things we do have a lot of impact on is controlling waste, controlling expenses, cost control. And so this really is integrated into that particular area. So let's take a look. So the eight areas of waste that we are exploring, if you're new to lean construction, are defects, overproduction, waiting, non-utilized talent, transportation of goods, inventory, motion, and extra processing steps. And they spell the word downtime. So that makes it much more easy to sort of internalize and uh, remember so that when you're actually seeing something you can kind of get a sense of ah that's what that is right a lot of times in construction we walk by things and we don't think about them and as i mentioned today we're going to be talking about waiting waiting and really we kind of explore that as as i said in two viewpoints work waiting for workers and workers waiting for work uh, you know, you can see in this uh, illustration here, this photo, um, the concrete trucks here and the workers are there. So that's good. Uh, when we have workers waiting a long time for the concrete to arrive, that's waiting time, workers waiting for work. When we have basically the concrete truck arriving and we either don't have enough workers, well, that's really bad, um, or basically delivery of material long before we need it, that's not really good either. So let's unpack this a little bit more. All right, so wait time, definition, time during which resources, workers, equipment, materials are idle and not productive. So in this particular photo image here, there's a lot of materials here and there's a lot of equipment here, but there's no workers here. So this is sitting here for maybe days, maybe weeks. You know, you see it in construction sites very often where there's a lot of stuff there, but there's not much going on. You have the materials, but you don't have the workers. Uh, and I would really say in construction this is a big one because all too often people are waiting too long it's not that you have to work faster it's that you have to have a more continuous flow right that's what you're working towards is to have a more continuous flow on your project it's not that you're trying to get everybody to work faster because the problem with that is some trades will work way faster than others and then you'll get bottlenecks all over the place or you'll get work being done ahead of when it should be done and you're going to get a lot of rework. So those are the other areas of waste that start to get integrated in this. And when I mentioned the eight areas of waste, they're not mutually exclusive. They crisscross all over each other. One causes one, then another, and then so on and so forth. So that that's something that really kind of jumbles up construction more so than a lot of other things than you would think. All right, so some examples of workers waiting for work. And this was a house that's being built down the street from me. And like every other day, there it just sits there, right? So instead of it taking eight months to build, it takes like 14 months to build. Like really, you're lengthening the period. And of course, when you lengthen the period of how long it takes something to build, there's costs. You got to pay property taxes. You've got to pay interest on loans, you know, the financing for the land that you purchase. Uh, there's still management that's working on this project, but they don't have as much to do. Uh, there's a per diem cost of your projects every day. Uh, there's a clock ticking that's incurring costs, even if nothing is getting done typically. So any place that you can tighten that up, and have a more continuous flow is going to help you reduce the costs on your project, right? And you know, what are the causes? 
poor scheduling, delays in material delivery. We've had a lot of supply chain issues over the last four years, right? Uh, material delivery, lack of clear instructions often where somebody thought something was supposed to happen, it didn't, or maybe they thought it was going to be at a different date. So poor communication taking place. You know, if you have a team of electricians waiting for the completion of the framing before starting their work, that's not good. What's not going to, what's going to happen is you're not going to have them standing there. Basically, they're going to go and they're going to work somewhere else. And once they start somewhere else, when you're ready for them, they won't necessarily be ready for you. So that then expands that time even further. You know, a trade's not going to wait around at the site. They're going to leave and they're going to go work somewhere else. But they're, they're going to actually lose money in that transfer too because they were waiting around even a little bit and they couldn't do the work. That's a problem, right? And then what are they going to do? Well, the next time they're going to want to charge you more because or they want to make a claim this time because you're wasting their time. So these things have all these sort of integrations that cause friction we'll call it friction on your projects which can lead to adversarial relationships and projects taking longer than you thought they would so work waiting for workers this is basically where you have the tasks are ready but the workers aren't there so in very busy economies uh, like the greater Toronto area, like probably your city, uh, where construct there's a shortage of skilled construction workers. Very often that's the case. It's trying to fit your schedule with trade contractors' schedules because they have their own schedules. So you're much more likely to be able to schedule the work and have it happen when you want when you don't have a gazillion changes to your schedule. If you're constantly changing your schedule, then they're changing their schedule, then you have a lot more conflicts and you have a lot more of like they've left and started somewhere else, like I mentioned, right? Now, of course, some of that is labor shortages. Some of that is not having a good schedule. Some of it's not maintaining and iterating the schedule. It will change no matter how good you are. There will be some adjustments to the schedule and you want to give them as much lead time when that changes as possible. That's really, really important too, right? Um, so we have to be very cognizant of that and make sure that we don't have these sort of sites, you know, on a perfectly good day, just sitting there idle. It's not a rain day. It's a nice day. Temperature's good. A lot of things could have been being done during this time period. Another example, this is um, actually at my college. Uh, I took this uh, last, I guess, uh, oh, April. And... So this is, uh, these were going to be two, I'm not sure if they're going to be classrooms or computer labs. Either way, it's a problem. The, you know, the work started on them, I'd say, October of the previous year, and it kind of just got ripped out and just sat there. And it's still sitting there. And it's now summertime and it's still not finished. I'm not certain that it'll be finished by September either. And it's not like there's a ton of work to be done in this place. Uh, but I do know that we are constantly struggling with schedules at my college because we have an abundance of students and a shortage of classrooms, right? And so having this basically uh, sit idle is a waste. It's a big waste, right? And whether it's got to do with facilities or whether it's got to do with coordination of contracts or whether it's got to do with coordination of permits, it's a waste, and so what you want to do is look at these types of things and say, okay, that's fine. It's, a, you know, it's not about finger pointing or blame or any of that. It's really about how could we do this better the next time, right? What could we do the next time? Maybe we don't rip these rooms out until we're ready, you know, because they could still be used. Uh, so until we've got all of our ducks in a row uh, when you're talking about an existing facility. Uh, maybe it's that we've got to get our, do a better job of getting our permit approvals. Maybe it's that we've got to do a better job of our procurements with our contractors. Uh, maybe it's we've got to get more reliable contractors. It could be a bunch of things, but I'd want to know the source of that so that we could improve it for the next time. Otherwise, you know what? You just keep doing the same thing over and over again. What was it Einstein, or at least Einstein's that reported to have said uh, that um, basically it's insanity to keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. So in lean construction, we really want to try to get at the root cause, look for how we can improve it the next time. It's not so much finger pointing this time, it's how do we fix it? How do we fix it so it doesn't keep happening? Um, what are the things that we can do? 
And the impact of wait time, you know, it's going to be impact project duration and cost, as I said. Uh, you know, nobody likes to wait. Nobody likes this sort of thing going on. I don't like it if I've got a contract with uh, a GC and then I've got to wait. GC doesn't like it if they're dragging things out. So how do we do this better? And again, you got to really kind of dig down. I think the next slide I get into it. But as I've said, there is a per diem cost of every day you're on the project and when it basically nothing is happening, there are still costs being incurred on that project. So you really want to look at streamlining that process and identifying wait time. You know, you do that through observation, time tracking, workflow analysis. You got to be watching. You got to be looking for these things. You got to be thinking about these things and then you got to be acting on them. Uh, how do you do it? Well, uh, you could be doing it with last planner system in lean construction, right? So basically you'd have a lot more collaboration going on in a full IPD project, integrated project delivery. A lot of these things could be discussed and planned out in the beginning. And then of course, iterating as you go along. And that's the nice thing about last planner system. It's a very collaborative process just by nature, uh, which is good. Um, value stream mapping. Well, if it's something that's happening over and over again, it's worth just mapping out all the steps that are involved with the people that are involved in the steps. This is currently how we do it. And then looking at that really closely and then saying, what would a future state look like that would be better? And where could we save time so that we could improve the flow? Right. And that would be the future state. And then you would try that future state. And then you may have to do in other iterations. That's what we call plan, do, check, adjust. You plan this, you do it, you try it, you check how it went, and then you adjust it, right? So it does, because it doesn't always work the first time. You've got to continuously work on these things. So you might have a number of iterations that you try it. At some point, it's probably going to be pretty good. Uh, not that you don't give up continuous improvement, but there's probably other things that are more worth your time that you would want to focus on because you're looking at Pareto, the 2080. What's something that we could look at to make that if we spent this time doing it, that'll give us like a X amount of times return, a four or five or 10 times return on that effort. That's what you're looking at. And that's where you can really start out to get those low hanging um, fruit supplied. So, you know, just, to, just I thought I'd uh, iterate this a little bit with a schedule example of, you know, what happens when we get this sort of wait time and how it affects our project. So let's just flip to Microsoft Project for a minute. I have this schedule that, and those have watched some of my other videos, you know, I have a bunch of different schedules that we look at. I've got this one um, that's this uh, new township administration building. And let's just say, you know, uh, basically the lay down area as indicated on the drawings. Um, let's just say we're updating things and right now in this area we've got we had a delay but we've adjusted things so at this point we are on track with our project we got zero variance on our plan there's as i said things will go in and out and in and out but we actually have things back on track we had done a recovery for the last update from this status date and some things happen with the lay down fill area and so when i show what happened and this is basically when you get those delays occurring, um, uh, basically, okay, nothing's happened here for uh, four days, right? Um, or three days, three day delay, right? So nothing's happened for those three days. What's going on, right? So maybe this was, you know, a result of an error in the drawings. Maybe this is a breakdown of equipment. Maybe this is the excavation sub left the site for some other project. But whatever it is, it's now caused a delay of three days all the way through the project. That's critical path, right? Something happens and it pushes everything out. That's the ripple effect that occurs. So that's why we try or we should be working harder at avoiding those kind of delays, right? Because it has this impact on the start date of all the succeeding subcontractors. 
And in some cases, that might mean we have to uh, reschedule the forming contractor. If we have to reschedule the forming contractor, well, what are they going to do with their people for that few days as a result of that? They're probably going to start somewhere else, and then they're going to be delayed at coming back to us, which will then cause another delay. So I'm not saying these things don't happen, but it's definitely a situation where you're going to have workers waiting for work. The work's not ready, so they're what are they going to do? They're not going to stand around. They're going to go to another project. And that causes these particular types of problems. We have a plan with this project. And if we go to our tracking Gantt over here for a second, we can kind of see um, how this plan uh, compares to what we had thought was going to be happening. So I can uh, zoom this one out a little bit. And we'll go so that we see it by the day. And maybe I'll shrink this down a little bit so that we can just take this down, that we can get it down to a size that we can better have a sense for, I usually say. And then we'll go to that area and see what's going on. Okay, so we can see this. It's pushed everything. Wow, it's pushed everything out. Okay, so we and we see the variance there. And so that's what we're trying to avoid, right? That is essentially causing those ripple effect. And it means that, the work's not ready for the workers, right? Because the work's not ready for the next workers, they're not going to come and they're going to go somewhere else. And then you get these ripple effects occurring. That is a good example of basically how this structures and happens in our project. Okay, so let's flip back to our slides. We're back. Reducing wait time. Communication. So we need to improve communication. We need to make sure that it, we have systems in place. This is actually a daily huddle that's occurring at about 7 a.m. in the morning on one of the projects. So they're having a daily huddle before everybody starts up. We have to make sure that we have good communication and communication systems, especially when it comes to what needs to be done, who's doing it, where they're working, what kind of supplies, materials are going to be coming in, where the lay down areas are going to be and basically coordinating that. And some of that will come up in our future videos where we dive into things like transportation and inventory, right? So this is this is where this is kind of helpful. So then if we're thinking about how do we improve the workflow and not have workers waiting for work, work waiting for workers, we have to incorporate a lot better communication systems better scheduling systems, stronger commitments with the trades. So when we're doing our procurements, making sure that we really have emphasized uh, the need for commitment. We've provided um, draft schedules. We talk about how we're going to iterate schedules collaboratively and making sure that we get those kind of commitments because I think we have to emphasize in construction too that it's about playing the long game, not just the short game. And what I mean by that, and I've said it enough times, different people have talked about this concept. Uh, there's the project, right? The project is a finite game. This is this project that we're doing. Uh, the, so that's the short game, the finite game. We finish this project, it's done. The long game or the infinite game, Simon Sinek uh, and James Karst like to uh, call it, uh, is basically, well, there's more than one project. We want to work together in future projects. We want to build strong working relationships. We want to build trust and we need to commit to getting being effective at getting the work done. I think a lot of this is relational and it's important to build those relationships in construction. And part of the lean process of Improving workflow is getting stronger commitments, and we call that reliable promises from the people that we're doing work with, major vendors and trades. So hopefully that's giving you an idea of the third area of waste, wait time. The next one we're going to look at is very interesting, and my next video is non-utilized talent. So I'm Tom Stevenson. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you liked it, click like. It really helps out the channel. Leave a comment. If you've got examples of workers waiting for work and uh, work waiting for workers, please put uh, it in the comments. That's always helpful. And click subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.